Good morning. I welcome you to a new week, a new season, a new, new day. We give thanks to God for what he has done since we began these 21 days of stepping up to higher ground. I'm so thankful and I believe you are seeing yourself stepping up to higher ground. This day is day number 18. We have three more days to go after today. I want to ask you to please do everything to make the most of the rest of the days. Take personal interest in getting yourself set for what is packaged fully for you in these meetings. God in his wisdom, I believe, arranged this meeting to help every one of us step to the new height he has ordained for us. I believe that with all of my heart, that God in his love and mercy, in his love and mercy has set this program to help reposition us, to strengthen us, and to perfect what he's doing in our lives. And to him be all the glory. Amen. Please bear with me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to set my system so that my video can be activated, but it's really not working. So let me concentrate on the focus of the day. All right, by the grace of God, I am continuing this stepping up to higher ground on a unique topic that is a key the Lord led in my spirit today. He calls it gratitude. Stepping up to higher ground through gratitude. Gratitude. What is gratitude? Gratitude is about being thankful. It's about being thankful. It's about expressing how grateful you are to God and to a vessel. It could be your spouse. It could be your parents. It could be your employer. It could be your teacher. It could be your pastor. All right? Being expressive of your thankfulness, being thankful. Gratitude is about showing appreciation, expression of appreciation. That is gratitude. The Lord said, one way to step up to higher ground is gratitude, gratitude. Gratitude is about returning of kindness returning of kindness and also expressing appreciation for kindness that is shown to you. Giving expression to, you know, appreciating the kindness you have received and also returning kindness that is shown to you. Kind, I mean, gratitude is about giving credit, giving credit to God for what he has done. Giving credit to God for what he has done. Giving credit to people for what they have done in your life. Giving credit to people no matter how small and to God no matter how small it may look. To give credit for good that is extended to you, kindness that is extended to you. Acknowledging it. Acknowledging God for what he has done. Acknowledging people for what they have done. That is gratitude. Now, God said, gratitude is one key that takes you to higher ground. Somebody helps you to find a job. Somebody helps you to, you know, um, go through a difficult time. Being thankful being grateful, being appreciative is very important. And we don't overlook this if we must go far. And like I said, 
is not just to God alone, but to mankind. Being appreciative, being thankful to people around you, to people around you. Don't take people's service or people's good works for granted. Learn to be appreciative, to be thankful, and to show gratitude for the little kindness, the little good works, the little service, and the great ones. Very important. Very important. Don't think it is, well, why do I need to thank this person? It is his responsibility. It is her responsibility. No. Whatever good people do to you, thank them for it. Now, the Lord said to me that one of the reasons why people go down is ingratitude. Ingratitude is one of the reasons why people crash in life. One of the reasons why people fail is ingratitude. Inability to acknowledge people for what they have done in your life. Inability to acknowledge God for his kindness, his mercy. That is one reason why people don't go far in life. Now, I want us to look at a few scriptures. Before I talk about that, I want to call the attention to, 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 okay, let me begin with what should be our focus in this gratitude, in this gratitude we are talking about. The Lord said to me, learn to thank me for everything. I saw it in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 18. Thanking God for everything. Ephesians, rather. Let me take it from that of Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 19 to verse 20. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 19 to verse 20. Thanking God for everything. Thanking God for everything. Now, most of the things that happen to us, be it positive or negative, before anything comes your way, it passes through God. God examines whatever trial, whatever storm, whatever challenge, whatever blessing, whatever good promotion, lifting, breakthrough, rising, it passes through God. The Bible says no man receives anything unless it is given to him from above. So being thankful that you woke up this morning is not your power, it's not your mind, it's not by your making. He said, and give thanks for everything, for everything to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God for everything, for everything. Verse 20 says, giving thanks always, always for all things unto God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God for everything, for everything, not just some. Verse 19 says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. For what? For everything. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, that in everything, we give thanks to God. In everything, in everything, give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Somebody was sharing with me two days ago, of a man of God that God is using massively, massively, globally. He said the pastor was giving testimony that when they were growing up, things were very difficult. And the mom happened to be a very dedicated, devoted woman of God, a great intercessor. Blessed are you if you have a, an intercessor as a mother. The pastor is, you know, was saying that sometime they will come back from school, there is no food, no food, nothing, not even a slice of bread. 
and their mom, instead of complaining and crying and uh, you know ab abusing the husband, he will go fetch water and put it in the glass and tell them and pray over it and tell them this water contains everything you need. This water contains everything you need. Say, Mama, we are hungry. It's not water we need. We need food. Say, well, my children, there is no food, but God has given us water. Let's thank him. They bless the water and thank God and take that water, drink the water. And the pastor said that by that, he developed the habit of thanking God when there is nothing, thanking God when there is plenty appreciating God for little things and for great things. And gradually it made him to build his faith. I heard him saying that the mom taught him how to pray in times when there is difficulty, in times when everything is going well. And through that faith of trusting God and being thankful and praying through the day, through the night, this man of God has become so big today that the entire globe is celebrating what God has done in his life. I mean, there is nothing, absolutely nothing he can't afford to buy today. But learning to be thankful to God paves way to great heights. Most times people are so ungrateful, full of complaints, full of murmuring. You will agree with me that it was because of murmuring that the people of Israel did not enter the land of promise. Because of murmuring, because of complaining, God, you didn't do this one. You didn't do that. Moses, where are you and your God? Where are the promises? Because of murmuring and complaining, God even sent serpents to bite them. Because of unbelief that led to murmuring, complaining, bitterness, they lost entering into the promise of God. Now, the Lord said, Stepping up to higher ground, one of the key, one of the secret is gratefulness or gratitude or thankfulness or appreciation, being thankful in every circumstance. Very important. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19, the scripture calls our attention to something very important there. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. Thank, thanking, say thanksgiving will come from King James. He says, and come and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. Out of them, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. I don't know if you are noticing something there. Said, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. As a result of it, I will multiply them. The New Living Translation said, there will be joy and song of thanksgiving and I will multiply my people. I will multiply them. Not diminish, you know, not diminish them. I will honor them and not despise them. So one way to honor, one way to enlargement, one way to a multiplied life is being thankful to God, being thankful to God in everything, being thankful to God, being thankful to God. Colossians chapter two, four rather verse two, stirred up my spirit this morning. He says, devote, he says, continue in prayer and watch and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter four, verse two, three things we are told to do there. If we must rise to the higher ground, he said, continue in prayer and watch in same with thanksgiving. New Living says, devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind, with an alert mind and a thankful heart. These are keys that take you to the top. Prayer, please, devoted prayer, devoted prayer, not just prayer that comes when there is trouble. 
Some people only pray when they have bad dream. When there is crisis, that's when they remember to pray. Devoted prayer. He says, continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. In all season, continue in prayer. And watch, watch in the same. Watch in the same. This translation says, with an alert mind, a focused mind. A visionary mind, a mind that can see beyond the challenge of the now, a mind that can see beyond the immediate moment, sensitive mind, focused mind, undistracted mind, and a thankful heart, a thankful heart. Remember, God is calling you to the high ground. And one of the ways to go there, prayer, keeping focus and thankfulness, Some. 34 verse number one, Psalm 34 verse one, blessed be God. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times, at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times, not at sundry time, not occasionally, no. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. Constantly, constantly speak his praises. Please, I want you to take note of this. Are you going out? Are you coming in? Are you driving? Are you cooking? Are you sweeping? Whatever you do, please form the habit. He said, I will praise the Lord at all times. While I'm going to bed, when I'm waking up, whatever I'm doing, I am praising God. He says, I will constantly speak his praise. Speak his praise. Speak his praise. I see a similar thing in chapter 30, verse 12. Chapter 30, verse number 12. This is a great king that had everything. And this is one of the secrets of his triumph in life. He says, to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever, forever. That's what took me to that portion. Said that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. Not be silent. Not be silent. Don't close your mouth. They say a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Learn to open your mouth and sing. Thank him. Find a way to make God know that you acknowledge his goodness, that you can see, you can observe, you understand that he has been kind and merciful to you. He said, I will give thanks forever, forever, forever at every point in time. Now, this is what God is calling our attention to even this season. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in all faith, through prayer, thanksgiving, all right, with supplication, let your request be made known to God. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6. Having said all this, please, I want you to remember, something came to my heart this morning, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And as I was looking into that, I saw the wisdom of God. He said, and let the peace of God rule your heart to the which also you are called in one body and be thankful and be thankful. It's a command. The Lord called my attention, says the thankfulness, gratitude is a command, is a command, is not optional. He said, and always be thankful, full stop. He said, and let the peace that comes from Christ, rule in your heart. Full stop. Let the peace of God rule. The peace that comes from Christ, the peace that comes from Christ, that is peace that comes from the abundance of your riches. That is peace that comes from, you know, seeing everything going the way you expect it. Wonderful. That's the prayer, that's the de desire. But that is peace that comes from Christ, all right, as a result of what Christ has accomplished, as a result of what he did for you on the cross, that is the base, that is the foundation, that is the anchor of your peace. He said, for as 
For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. Let his peace rule in your heart, then you will be able to give peace. If you don't have peace in your heart, you can't give peace. Let's have the peace of God. Let's express it. Let's make peace and always be thankful. Always be thankful. A thankful person is, is, is certainly going to be fruitful. If say I usually say thankfulness leads to fruitfulness. A thankful person will be fruitful and a fruitful person certainly will shine in any society. So to be thoughtful is to be thankful. Thoughtful people are thankful people and thankful people are fruitful people. If you are thoughtful, you cannot but be thankful. Thanking God for people around you, thanking God for your family, thanking God for your children, thanking God for your spouse, thanking God for your pastor, thanking God for the Global Harvest Prayer Network, thanking God for what has been happening on this altar and how God is using this altar to be a blessing. Be thankful, be thankful. Thank God for the little salary you are receiving, the little business you are doing. Be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. The phone you're using now, I know if you have all the money you want, that is not the kind of phone you, 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 you desire to have. But be thankful for the phone you have. Be thankful that you have a roof over your head. Be thankful that you have leg to stand on. There are people who wish they can stand with their two legs. There are, I was sharing with them in church yesterday. There are if people who are deaf, all right, if they have opportunity to just hear only for one hour, they will be so grateful. People who are dumb, when they come to church and see how people are shouting and singing, but they are not able to say one word, do you know how heartbroken they are? Imagine if they suddenly speak for just one hour. If I can just speak for one hour alone, I'll be so grateful. But you have every privilege to speak and some people even become talkative. They talk and talk nonsense. So I want us to learn to be grateful in every single thing. He said, and always be thankful. Always be thankful. What are we thankful for? Like I said, be thankful for everything. Be thankful for everything. Number two, be thankful for forgiveness. Psalm 103 from verse 2 to 3. Psalm 103 from verse 2 to 3. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Oftentimes we forget the benefit, the blessing, the help. He says, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth thy diseases. Be thankful to God for all the benefits. Be thankful to God for forgiving you your sin. I don't know anybody here who at one time or the other does not make mistakes, does not sin against God, either by word or by thought or by action. And when we come to him and say, God, I have missed it today. My heart strayed away. I have lost it in my heart. I have spoken foul words in my, with my lips. I have acted in a way I shouldn't have. All right, I didn't utilize your grace, your gift, my time, the way it should. There was idle word in my lips. I wasted time. T waste of time is seen before God. Waste of time is seen before God. Because every time is packaged for something according to God's plan. And the devil wants you to shift away from what God wants you to do with each time and use it for a different thing. So when you do it, you have walked against God. It is error. It is lawlessness. It is disobedience. It is departure from the ways and will of God. Sin is not only when somebody tells lies and all of that. So having said that, when you come before God and say, God, please, I am sorry. I've offended you. Forgive me, cleanse me. He forgives you. What do you owe him? Do you know it takes shedding your blood for sin to be forgiven? But the blood of Jesus washes us daily and cleanses us. So we ought to thank him. Remember to thank God in the midst of your troubles. 
we saw it in the book of Acts chapter 16. The Bible said that Paul and Silas, they praised God. They praised God in the midst of their predicament, in the midst of their trouble, in the midnight. Said, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs unto God, and the prisoners heard them. At midnight, in the midst of pain, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of the, when your pain downs heavily on you, is in the midnight. In the midst of it, in the center of their pain, they began to praise God. They began to sing. And what happened in verse 26? He said, and suddenly there was an earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone bound were loosed. This is what God can do. And the keepers of the prison woke up and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. And they came and said, sir, stop, don't kill yourself. We are still here. So what happened? Praising God, thanking God, being grateful, they had reasons to complain. God, we are preaching your gospel. We are laboring for you. See where we ended up in prison. We didn't, we shouldn't be here, but they are the way. Instead of complaining and murmuring and showing dissatisfaction, telling God you are too weak, you shouldn't have let this happen to us, they began to praise God. In the midst of it, the angel of the Lord landed and the power of God was everywhere. The, you know the story. So what I'm trying to communicate here is learn to praise God in difficult times. And that opens the gates. It opens the gate. It breaks the chain and takes you to the higher ground. One key way to rise into the top, rise into the next height is praising God, praising God, praising God. Very important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, it says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who giveth us victory, victory, victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 55. So because of time, I'm going to stop here. Please, let us learn to be thankful for what we are receiving. Let us learn to be thankful for what we are receiving. In, Reve in Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 28 to verse 29, it tells us there is something we are receiving. It's called kingdom. We are receiving a kingdom. We are receiving the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Because of the kingdom we are receiving, he said, let us be thankful. Let us be thankful, knowing that God is releasing the fullness of his kingdom. The fullness of his kingdom is being released to you. Therefore, be thankful. So I want us to practice a little bit of what we have just said. It is not just this short time we have that we are to do this. When you are going to work today, please learn to be thankful. When you are at work, as you are doing your work, any moment you have, let people know you as, a, as, a, as, a, as an embodiment of gratitude to God. In gratitude to people, gratitude to your subordinates, to your seniors, to your younger ones, and the, 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 those who submit to you, all right? Be grateful. Let everybody know you for gratitude, thankfulness acknowledging the goodness of God and the goodness of people, being appreciative both by words, both by kind, and in every righteous means, be known for thankfulness, for gratitude, for showing appreciation everywhere. Let it be an attribute. I tell you, sir, I tell you, man, it will take you to the higher ground. It will open the door for you to go higher, to go higher. If you're an employer of labor, and your staff receive salary and come to you and say, thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. But others will say, why do you have to thank him? Is it not your due? You work for it. But that little foolishness, in quote, will add you know, favor or grace to the heart of your employer because of what you've done. So learn to be thankful to your husband for whatever he gives to you. Learn to be thankful. Don't be abusive. To your wife, don't be abusive. Whatever you receive from people, learn to be thankful. It is a key to the higher ground. 
Shall we begin to give thanks to God? Hallelujah. Father, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our heart. You can unmute yourself, unmute yourself, and begin to thank him. Glory to Jesus. Malus penantiana. Le redus penacatis. In the name of Jesus. For the state of the Patayana. The redding of the Father, we thank you, Lord. For what you have done for us. For the state of the Patayana. In the name of Jesus. For the state of the Patayana. In the name of Jesus. For the state of the Patayana. In the name of Jesus. For the state of the Patayana. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For the state of the Patayana. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For the state of the Patayana. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to take a little bit of strategic turning this into a into a warfare. Praise can become a, a weapon of war. Gratitude can become a weapon of war. Look at Psalm 67, Psalm 67, from verse five to verse number seven. Very important. He says, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, our own God shall bless us. He said, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear thee. Take note of that. Say, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let all the people, let all the people praise thee. Then, then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, our own God shall bless us. So there is a blessing that comes through praising God. Being grateful, being thankful, showing gratitude, it opens door to higher ground. It opens door to the lifting of God, increase, multiplication. He says, let all the earth, let all the people, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. He says, may the nations praise thee, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise thee. All right? Verse 6, verse 6, he said, Then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Glory to God. I want us to pray. Giving thanks to God. Thank him specifically from your very room, your very house, your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, 
your parents, give him thanks. From there, thank him for your pastor. Thank him for this platform. Thank him for the people who have been ministering in your life, either online or on site. Give him thanks for your employers. God, I thank you for my employer. God, I thank you for those who are working in my company, who are working for me, even the maid in the house. Lord, I thank you. Even the people that clean the compound. Lord, I thank you. Be thankful. The Lord said to me this morning, gratitude is a key, is a key. Don't neglect it. Don't overlook it. Maximize it. It takes you to a realm of fruitfulness and abundance of harvest and riches and elevate your life on every side. It opens door of favor in the hearts of people. Shall we begin to do that? And please, apart from this prayer, when you go to work today, begin to thank people everywhere. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I come before you this morning to show my gratitude. I want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. In the name of Jesus, I am you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I I want you to give thanks to God for the new height he's lifting you to. Giving thanks for sending divine help, divine help, covenant helpers, prophetic helpers to give you a push to higher ground. He said, wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and, 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 and godly fear. We are receiving a kingdom. There is a future that is unfolding. There is a new glory that is unfolding, a new height that is unfolding, a new height that is unfolding. He said, because of this, because of this, let us receive grace and be thankful. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful. I want you this morning to begin to consider yourself moving to the next level. It is the future you see that you assess. It's the future you see that you will, that, that you will attract. If you don't see it, 
you don't attract it. It's when you see it and you focus on it, it will gravitate towards you. Lord, I thank you because I'm rising to the next level in my calling, in my ministry, in my family life, in my health, in my health, I'm moving to the next level. In my finances, I'm moving to the next level. In my parenting, I'm moving to the next level of glory. Shall we begin to thank him? Hallelujah. Father, I receive grace this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have said before me, the glorious heart, the glorious heart, you have said before me, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm moving from glory to glory, from goodness to goodness, to show me, Father, I upon my life, in your calling upon my life, I am stepping to higher ground, I'm stepping to higher ground, I'm stepping to higher ground, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless Every Monday, we are going to pray for Africa. Tuesday, we are going to pray for Europe. Wednesday, whatever we do, we are going to pray for Asia. Every Thursday, we're going to pray for Australia. Fridays, we pray for North and South America. I want us to lift up the continent of Africa to the Lord right now. Our focus is in that Psalm 67, verse 6 from verse 5, I mean 5 to 6. He said, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the peoples praise thee. Let all the peoples, all the people of Africa praise thee. Verse number six says, then shall the earth, then shall Africa yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us as a continent. Verse number 27, rather said, God shall bless Africa and all the ends of Africa shall fear him. All the ends of Africa shall fear him. I want us to be, oftentimes we complain, we don't have electricity, we don't have good roads, we don't have good government, we don't have this and that. But I don't know if we are aware that Africa is making wave globally. Africa is, is, a, is simply a wonder. It's simply a wonder. I remember sharing with us of a white couple that came all the way from Australia years ago. They came to Johannesburg and they met somebody led them to me. They said, we have heard that the move of God, the greatest cloud of glory, the greatest anointing, the greatest presence of God is within Africa. And if you want to contact it, you need to come to Africa. That's what God told them. And they came all the way from Australia to meet African ministers, to pray for them. A bishop, I said, sir, you a bishop and me, I'm a pastor. He said, no, it's not about title. It's about the presence of God that is resident in your land. I want us to thank God for what is going on in Africa and what is with Africans, Africans all over the world. There are a number of Africans on this platform now who are, from, who are in different parts of the world. Let's thank God for what God is doing with Africans and what God is doing both in the government, both in the economy, in the education, all right, in the church, yes, in every area. When COVID hit the world, 
the people in Europe and America believe that if we just wipe out Africa, but look at the percentage of its influence, influence rather, it was minimal compared to what happened in the civilized world. God is so, it's like God is so jealous of Africa. God is so protective of Africa. God is so mindful of Africa. God is so defensive of Africa. And the presence of God is so heavy in this nation. It's non-negotiable. It's obvious. It is known. A friend came from Germany some time ago. And when he watched the way we danced and sang and praised, he said, Pastor, how you people don't know what you're enjoying here. The way you worship God in Africa, the way you love God, the way you serve God, we don't see it over there. Shall we begin to give thanks to God for what is going on in Africa and for the future of Africa that is about to explode, the future that is about to break forth in Africa. Shall we give him thanks? Hallelujah. Father, we come here to say thank you. For the name of Jesus. Thank you for Thank you, Father, for what is going to happen in Africa. Thank you for moving Africa from one level to the other. Let your glory shine, mighty God, upon Father, we thank you that you are present in Africa. In all aspects of economically, spiritually, and Jesus mighty now we pray. Amen. Amen. Lastly, on this, I want you to declare. I want you to proclaim Africa shall be saved. Africa yes. shall become the center of the greatest move of God ever. No soul in Africa is permitted to go to hell. It is not in the will of God at all for any one soul in Africa to go to hell. Therefore, I want us to pray that the gate of salvation, the gate of salvation will open unto every soul, unto every family, unto every community, unto every city and nation of Africa. Lord, we dedicate Africa to you. Arise in Africa, shake Africa, and let the glory of yes, God Lord. come upon Africa. Shall we pray? Hallelujah. Father, we lift up Africa Father, in the name of God. Yes, Lord, over 
Glory to Jesus. Father, we give thanks to you. We're here to say, Lord, thank you for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for the things you have made happen in our life and the things we are expecting to happen in our lives. Thank you for the family we found ourselves in and the people you've surrounded us with in our family, the ministry and the church, Lord, and the Global Harvest Prayer Network. You have raised for a time like this to ignite fire in the hearts of your people, to wake up the, 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 the mighty men and to wake up the men of war that we might rise up and speak out, defend in the kingdom of God and become your agents, your mouthpiece, your agents, your mouthpiece in this generation. Father, we thank you for bringing us to this platform, for bringing us into our family. Thank you, God of heaven, for everyone that is related and associated and connected to us in life. We thank you for them all. Be thou glorified. Even for those who are ill disposed towards us, they are all working out our way to the top. If not that the brothers of Joseph's sold him. They intended it for evil, but you used that which was negative to turn him into the glory that he eventually landed at. Receive all the glory for the good and the bad, for the good and the bad. We thank you for all of these are walking our way to the topmost top, to the praise of your name. Thank you for the good health, Thank you for the provisions. Thank you for the riches. Thank you for the job, the business, the open door, the connection, the relationship you brought us into. Receive all the glory for all you are loading us, the daily benefits, the daily benefits, the daily benefits of serving you. Receive all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing in all the African nations, in all the sector, the government, the school system, the economy of Africa, the health of Africa, the move of the spirit in the churches of Africa. We thank you for all Africans in diaspora. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing with Africans in all the nations of the world. Glory to your name for the future that is unfolding for Africa. The future that is unfolding in Africa. You say, let the people praise me. Let all the people praise me. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Lord, we declare increase. I declare increase. I declare multiplication. I declare enlargement. I I declare rising to the higher ground, uprising, great lifting, divine lifting to higher ground, divine lifting to higher ground, higher opportunity, great opportunity, lifting to greater opportunity greater productivity, greater fruitfulness, greater harvest, greater harvest, greater harvest because of thanksgiving. May your name, Lord, be glorified. Help us to consistently stay in the attitude of gratitude, the attitude, the culture, the nature of gratitude, thankfulness, appreciation in words and in action to God and to everyone. Let it become our character and let it become what people will know us for. Thank you for your illumination today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to Jesus. 